Hey folks, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. And today I want to dissect high pass filtering, what it's for, why we use it. And it turns out that we've been doing it all wrong all along, when in fact low pass filters are your best way of isolating low level noise that's stealing space and clarity from your mixes. So if you're familiar with high or low pass filtering, I'm sure you're thoroughly confused. So let me explain. I'm going to pull up the channel EQ here. And first, let's just talk about what a high pass filter is. You see this filter right here that hangs out in the bottom of the frequency spectrum on the left side of the channel or linear EQ. And it looks like a brick wall. I tend to set my slopes very high. You can set them pretty low, but I like them just chopping everything out. So this is set to 70 hertz and everything below 70 hertz is being removed from this instrument. Why would we do that? Well, aside from kicks, kick drums, and bass guitars, most instruments tend to have some low-level noise that is not really necessary. And though you can't quite hear it, when you stack it across 30, 40, 50 tracks, it tends to balloon in size and it takes away from the clarity of your mixes. I sort of think of a pane of glass with a light snow on it. You know, there's a light dust, you can still see through the glass, it's fine. You know, it's being obscured a tiny bit. Now imagine 50 panes of glass all in a line with the same light dust. Now there's so much snow over the 50 panes of glass that it's distorting your view and you can hardly see through them, right? So it's the same thing in audio. One track by itself with a little noise, eh, not a big deal. 50 tracks now starting to add up into a significant amount of noise that's not helping your mixes, okay? So there's low level noise and we use the filter to remove it. I'll demonstrate with this synth here. I'm gonna bring down the filter and I'll show the spectrum analyzer and we'll see some of that low level noise. So you can see that there's something going on down here. And this most likely is noise that we don't need to worry about we're having our mixes, so we remove it with the high pass filter. The typical way that you would go about using a high pass filter is you would bring up the filter until you hear it start to change the tone of your instrument. And then it's like, okay, that's too far, back it off. The problem here is when we do that, it kind of becomes a game of guessing where the right frequency is for this filter to be set. Let me let me show you. Right, you can see that the keys are walking down to lower notes. And so it becomes sort of difficult to discern where is the best spot to place this filter. It turns out that low pass filters are your best way of isolating that noise. Now, a low pass filter is the exact opposite, right? It's a brick wall that comes from the high end down and anything above this frequency is removed. Now, this seems counterintuitive, right? You're not trying to remove highs or mids from your instrument. It's the low level noise that's the problem. But since the highs and the mids are most prominent when you listen to a track, that's the part that you pick out the easiest. They obscure what's going on down in the low end of the spectrum. When you remove these frequencies, now you're only listening to the low end of the spectrum. So it's kind of theoretical. Let me, let me show you. So I'm going to play this synth track. And I'm going to start introducing the low pass filter. And I'm going to bump up the gain so we can hear the low end. So clearly we can see there's some noise down here. We could probably bump it back a tiny bit, but we're in a good spot now. So we can remove the low pass filter, set it at 58 Hertz. And let's bring in 
the high pass filter and I'll bring my gain back down. And now we've found the perfect spot to set this high pass filter. Now I'm undoubtedly someone on the internet is going to point out to me if you bring in both filters, they don't quite line up exactly. They, there's a bit of an arc here and some noise potentially. And that's fine. You can fine tune the high pass filter from there and really isolate it. But now you know exactly where that low level noise exists. And then you're not carving into the fundamental tone of your instrument or some low end girth that is really important to your instrument. So I wanna demonstrate this to you as well with a piano track. So let's do the same thing. I'm gonna remove this high pass filter and I'm gonna bring the low pass down. So you can kind of hear that there's like some thumping of, you know, like the keys or the strings being hit by the hammers of the piano. So about 99 hertz. Let's set it to that. And, you know, don't blow yourself away by forgetting to turn the game back down. And this can be really helpful when you don't have a subwoofer or you don't have monitors that are really demonstrating to you what the low end sounds like, right? If you have small monitors or earbuds or something, this can be really helpful. So I want to demonstrate on one more, this other synth here, the Codex. Same thing. And you can hear that there's like some thumping of something having to do with the keyboard. So I set to 164. And now you're not impacting the important tone of your instrument, but you're removing that low level noise that's not helping anything. So then when you've got high pass filters across your mix, you know, we can quickly turn these on and off to hear the impact that they're having on our track. You know, there's a subtle lift on the track, and this will be compacted as you go on mixing, adding compression, adding different dynamic, you know, saturation, etc. By high passing on the front end, you're adding clarity and space to your mix that wouldn't have existed. And by using low pass filters to isolate that low end noise, you're just making your life insanely easier than trying to guess with a high pass filter while listening to how the mids and highs are being impacted. So. I hope that was helpful to you. As always, if it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel or subscribing on the blog, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I post new blog posts, new videos, content to only help you achieve more with Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.